How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Mr. Donahue here once again. This time we're going to take a look at catalysis. So objectives will be to describe how catalysts and enzymes increase the reaction rate in terms of mechanism and activation energy, as well as graphically show the effect of catalysts on potential energy diagrams. So what are catalysts? Catalysts are substances that change the speed of reaction without being permanently used up in the process. So analogies would be like using a power drill. It's going to speed up the whole process, but you're not going to run out of power drill. You know, you're not consuming that power drill. Uh, or using a mixer to combine ingredients versus hand mixing. That's going to make the process go a lot faster. The hand mixer still there at the end. Didn't use it up. So yeah, those are some analogies. So how do catalysts speed up reactions? Well, catalysts provide an alternative mechanism with either a lower activation energy or a greater percent of collisions being effective. So maybe they help with getting everything oriented so that they collide more effectively. Uh, but as a rule, typically, it's they lower the activation energy. This speeds up the chemical reaction. So mathematically, we know that K, the rate constant, is equal to that capital A times E to the negative EA over RT. So if you lower EA, the resulting, it results in a greater K, right? So the lower the activation energy, the bigger the rate constant is going to be. Increasing A also results in a greater K. So if you increase the number of effective collisions, maybe you keep things oriented right, that's going to increase our rate constant. So if we take a look at potential energy diagrams, we have reactants here, we got products here. If I were to add a catalyst, what it does is it lowers the activation energy. That's the only thing it affects. So typically, the activation energy is from, oh, went way too far, from where you start at the reactants to that activated complex. But when you add a catalyst, hey, you've lowered that now. So you need less energy to get that reaction to go. So as a general rule, catalysts lower the activation energy. Types of catalysts. So homogeneous catalysts. Basically, it's just the catalyst is in the same phase as the reacting molecules, right? Homogeneous means the same throughout. So if you have a homogeneous catalyst, it's in the same phase as the stuff that's reacting. So if you got aqueous reactants, uh, your catalyst is going to be aqueous as well. If you got gaseous catalysts, then your reactants are gaseous too. So heterogeneous catalysts are different. Hetero means different. So heterogeneous catalyst, the catalyst is in a different phase than the reactants. So an example you may be familiar with uh, is like, you know, if you had aqueous reactants with a solid catalyst, for example, like putting Mentos in soda. So the natural process of carbon dioxide coming out of the soda and the bubbles is sped up when you add the Mentos. So the carbon dioxide is aqueous, the Mentos is a solid. Uh, so that's an example of a heterogeneous catalyst. And it usually involves the adsorption of the reactants. So they usually bind to the surface of the catalyst that's in the different phase. And that's how they speed up the reaction. So there are active sites that attract the reactants. And it may not be the whole surface that absorbs the reactants. It might just be part of it, uh, certain regions. Uh, but that's what the catalysts do. And it's a very important process in refining fruit oil into different hydrocarbons as well as catalytic converters. So those would be examples of heterogeneous catalysts. Enzymes. Enzymes are a specific category of catalysts. So enzymes are a special type of catalyst, and they're found in living systems and are usually large protein molecules. So it's specific to one substance in one reaction. They're very specific. So it's like the lock and key model, how only one specific key shape will open that specific lock. Only one specific enzyme will bind to reactants in one particular reaction. So let's talk about a little vocab though with this. So substrate is a substance that binds to the enzyme involved in the reaction. The enzyme substrate complex is going to be just when the substrate is bonded to the enzyme. And the active site is specifically where the reaction is being catalyzed. So if we take a look here, our substrate is the stuff that's binding to the enzyme. This would be our enzyme substrate complex. And the active site is where is that process occurring. So that's where the reaction is occurring. This would be the active site of the enzyme because it's where it's active. So here's the step. Step one, the substrate binds. Let me erase. Substrate binds to the active site. So that's what's happening right here. This is step one. Substrate binds to the active site. Second step is the enzyme substrate complex 
is foreign. All right, this is this is two. We have an enzyme substrate complex. Sometimes this binding induces a change in the shape of the enzyme, which helps the reaction. So it, it you know the substrate binds to the enzyme. The enzyme changes its shape because that substrate is there now. This is due to intermolecular forces. Um, then the substrate molecules are activated and a rapid reaction occurs. So this could be the withdrawal or donation of some electron density at a particular bond or distortion of the shape. So this enzyme is doing something that's weakening this bond right there. And then the last step is the reaction occurs and the products leave the active site and the enzyme is free to repeat the process over and over. So the enzyme, you know, helped that process happen, but it didn't get used up. So here you go. Summarized. Describe how catalysts and enzymes increase the reaction rate in terms of mechanism and activation energy, as well as graphically show the effect of catalysts on potential energy diagrams. Hope you found that helpful. Okay, bye.